Dropping the hammer. No, you're not. And welcome back to Dropping the Hammer with Dale McFadden. I'm Dale McFadden. Uh, we're here today to talk about Road America NASCAR. Went road course racing over the weekend at Road America in Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin. Tyler Reddick won the cup race on Sunday. I was there to cover it. And with me to talk about it this week again is my good friend, John LaFollette. You know? No, 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 um... I, have, I have no puns. Just, just your name this time. <laughs> you know, um, I kind of felt a little bit um, like Tyler Reddick's son in this race. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know if you did. I mean, you were actually there. Watch it on TV. There were portions where I felt like like Tyler Reddick's little kid, um, just completely oblivious and and too tired to care. You know, well, I was I was working there, so I had to care. Yeah, yeah. Um... Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You were working, and I was just uh, in, enjoying a lazy Sunday before uh, a busy holiday. Um, also, hope that your 4th of July went well. Um, but before we get into the race, I just want to know what your overall impressions were of just Road America in general. I know you were there. I think it was your first time being there. Yes. I def I really want to go to that track someday, um, certainly to see an IndyCar race, probably in a, a, a cup race. But we can talk about uh, the future of, of, of cup series races at Road America a little later. But uh, overall, yeah. what did you think about uh, just the grounds and the atmosphere and everything in general at that track? Well, yeah, I was there some, this weekend covering the race for Speedsport and FrenchRush.com, where you could buy my work. Uh, and it was my first time to Road America. And let me tell you, when they say in the middle of nowhere, they're talking about Road America. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's in Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin, which is just farmland and uh, some, some lakes, uh, Elkhart Lake. <laughs> so it is in the middle of nowhere uh i i had to drive 30 minutes from my hotel to road america and the the media gate gate three is basically the backdoor entrance to this track and so the entire 30 minute drive i never saw any indication at all that a world-class racing facility was located in the middle of nowhere wisconsin and it's there uh, the first sign i saw was gate four road america and so i'm like this is how does this track exist <laughs> it, it, it's like, i just it just comes up out of nowhere and then all of a sudden here it is this huge four mile track camping grounds everywhere people just sitting around in their 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 lawn chairs and stuff watching sports cars go around um and it's just it's huge it's it's incredible it's a beautiful facility um but if you need to figure out if you're in shape or not <laughs> go spend a day at road america <laughs> i believe this, it. this was the most physically exhausting race weekend i have ever experienced uh my legs hated me <laughs> at the end of the first day uh so day two i i did stretches in my hotel room before I left. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, it's it's just a great facility. Uh, I mean, there's, there's not a lot of modern amenities. There's no actual like physical garage constructs. There's anything, all everything's just <laughs> going out in the open. Um, and the sports car garage area is mingled in with like people selling with tents of people selling die cast and other nascar merchandise and all this so it's like a swap meet it was being held at the same time as a sports car race weekend at the same time that a nascar race weekend was also taking place there and it, and it's like you're at a state park too it's basically what it feels like is that you're you're at a racetrack that got converted into a state park um that's the vibe uh race weekend meets swap meet meets state park <laughs> and that's what road america is 
I like how you mentioned it's basically out in the middle of nowhere, like away, from, like away from that. It feels like that's like describing like every Midwestern state. And I can say that because I'm from Indiana, but like you like all these every Midwestern state feels like it has like it's like two or three major towns. But then like 10 minutes outside of that town, you're just in cornfields or soybean fields immediately. So um, I'm like, I just I, I just Googled this place on a map and it's like a couple looks like about 45 minutes to an hour west of Sheboygan, which is probably one of the 10 favorite cities I like to pronounce. Um, but um, no, I mean, it just, it definitely looks like it's out in the middle. I mean, especially because this track is what, like four miles? Like it looks like just a, just in terms of acreage alone, it's a massive facility. So I would assume it has to be out in the country somewhere. But um, I just, I really want to get up here one of these days. I'd love to see an Indy car race here. Um, and like, like I said, we can talk about the future of Cup Series races here. Um, but so you mentioned it was a workout. You couldn't just bribe. Uh, I know that lots of the bigger media entities have like golf carts and stuff for these sort of things. You oh, couldn't, all, you couldn't... That, that, they're all the go-karts. Just go, go, go-karts go everywhere. The, the, I think that every golf cart in the country was sent to Road America. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you couldn't just bribe. You couldn't bribe your old friends at NBC for a ride. Like, hey, remember me, please? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I, it was never mentioned to us. That hey, media members get to use the golf carts. Which <laughs> I wish I had had one uh, because it would have made exploring the track easier. Because I didn't make it that far. Yeah, uh, I never made it past like um, there's this little you know concession stand over looking up above turn five, and I made it up there, and that was as far as I went. So, and like at one point, like I, I walked along. Uh, the straightaway that goes down to turn five which you know it's like you're just in the middle of the woods and there's a racetrack and there's like there's there's a person like laying out in a hammock uh, as sports cars are going by and i'm <laughs> like i want to be you um on google maps they actually have the concession stand marked on the track <laughs> and turn five maybe they referred to it like this on the track but according to google maps the part of the track that t- goes just before turn five is called uh the Moraline Sweep. Okay. The Mo- Moraine Sweep. I couldn't read. It was sideways because that's the way the track was going on the map. Moraine Sweep. Uh, so whoever Mr. or Ms. Moraine is, Moraine is uh, good for you. Um, where have you been to any other road courses except this one? The only ones I've been to have been the Charlotte Roval and Coda. So this is the first okay. nat- natural. No, well, Coda's technically a natural road course right but this is definitely more like i mean the road is obviously yeah this is a traditional road course for certainly um and i mean coda was built specifically for formula one so that's definitely got its own character to it um i mean how would you sort of i know i know the roval's a weird a weird creature so it's kind of hard to contextualize that one but just of those three just in terms of experience where would you kind of place this oh um no road america's one number one okay uh just because it's just so unique it's beautiful there like it's gorgeous all the way around um it, it's got its own just distinct vibe and i just you know mentioned it it's a racetrack state park swap meet um K- Koda, it's also huge um but i think it put on a it put on a better better cup race for sure yes yes than, than this was um uh, but then Coda, but Coda, and, I, and then the Roval. But with the Roval, if you sit in the right spot, you can see the whole track. So it's yeah. got that. It's got that benefit. Um, so yeah, that's how I would rank them. I I want to go to Watkins Glen at some point in the future. Um, of all Me too. Been, For whatever reason, been. IndyCar doesn't go there anymore. I think it's strictly just a money thing. Uh, never really sold particularly well there, but they always IndyCar always put on a great race there. But I'd like, yeah, go see an NASCAR. Well, you, race you, you, we could name a lot of tracks. That say, yeah, IndyCar just doesn't go there anymore. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. If it's like if it's not a mid if it's not a midwestern track, it's like mm, they don't really go there anymore. Um, I remember back in like the '90s, early 2000s, they tried to race at Dover, and like it was just a wreck fest. Like, 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 there was one race where they finished with like seven cars running because everyone just crashed. Um, but that's neither here nor there. Um, aside from your first time at Road America, uh, and you never forget your first time, Tyler Reddick's not going to forget his first time, even if his son will have no recollection of it. Yes. Um, <laughs> Tyler, so let, Tyler yeah, Reddick. Let's, let's get into this race. So, so Tyler Reddick uh, passed Chase Elliott with 17 laps to go for what would be the lead um, and held him off. 
and started pulling away with about five laps to go. And then finally, after 92 starts, is a NASCAR Cup winner. We have now seen five first-time winners this season, which matches the record from 02 and 2000, or is it 2011, 2001, 2011. I think you know um, more than I would. So everyone who you, th- all the people who were winless that we said they they should w- get a win, they've gotten a win. Yep. So you have Tyler Reddick, Daniel Suarez, Ross Chastain, Chase Briscoe, and Austin Cindric. Austin Cindric, and he's he he kicked this whole thing off the Daytona 500. Yes. So yeah, Tyler Reddick, who was he he came in. When he got to the Cup Series, he, he was basically part of the, the, the same class with Christopher Bell, Cole Custer. If you had picked one of them to, to get to win first, I would have picked Tyler Reddick. Same. Um, as a two-time defending champion in the Xfinity Series. And also, he went he went to RCR, even though, I mean, RCR wasn't the RCR of years past when he got here in 2020. Uh, but still, Christopher Bell went to... Um, what was Levine Levine family racing and the number 95 and Cole Custer went to the number 41 at Stuart Haas racing. But my assumption was wrong. He, uh, <laughs> Mr. Reddick was not the first to win that honor went to Cole Custer because we've got the restart of his life at Kentucky Speedway. Yes. Yes. 2020. <laughs> um, and then Christopher Bell last year gets his road course win in the race number two on the Daytona road course. And we've had so many first-time winners in the last two years. Michael McDowell, everyone we just mentioned. And, yes. it, and it got to this point where it was like, it feels like Tyler Reddick was like the only guy left mm-hmm. of all these people who you were expecting to win. And he's like the last one standing. I mean, outside of like this year's rookies, you know, Todd Gilliland and Harrison Burton. Yeah. Um, he, he was like this last guy standing. And I everyone would have assumed he'd have won by now. He's finished second five times in his career, three times this year. Yeah, including um, including the Daytona Dirt race that he just coughed up there at the last Daytona lap. Dirt, Although Daytona that, Dirt race. Daytona, Daytona, did I say Daytona? I'm sorry, Bristol. Daytona. I, <laughs> Daytona Dirt, oh my God. You know what? Bring it on. You know what? I would watch it. I'm not advocating <laughs> for it, but um, no, uh, Bristol Dirt, excuse me. Yeah, I mean, Bristol Dirt, he coughed it up there at the last, uh, the last turn, last lap. Granted, you know, he had some help with Chase Briscoe he, there, but he, did, but yeah, still. he didn't cough it up. He, he, he had the football pulled away from him at the last minute by, by yeah, Lucy. That's true. And we talked about this on the last show. We mentioned Reddick specifically, you know, saying how much he struggled the last several races. We were sort of, at least I was pondering if the win was going to come. And then yeah, I made a mistake. Behold, I, I should have stayed on the Reddick train. I know. Yeah, I, I told did. you, I you got to stick with Reddick. I, so. I picked I picked Chase. Who'd you pick? You picked uh, Chastain. Yeah. I tried to tried to stay undefeated with Trackhouse. Who had a good day? Both their drivers came yeah, to the top five. five. Um, but you know this race. I mean, aside from I mean, you spent about thirty seconds detailing Reddick passing Chase and holding them off, and and the, and the, the the pretty compelling back and forth action they had. Well, there just, for like, a bit. But even, like just like just going back to the battle, like just Red getting around. Uh, chase was riveting <laughs> it's like yeah all right man like I, I i i wish i could have asked him this like okay like every time you would go into turn five how much were you holding back mm-hmm. not to boot him because and i would have done it i just like uh enough of this well there were plenty of we saw on. we saw that plenty of times in this race and i don't know if you saw above wallace's in car camera where it was this helmet cam i mean he got dumped pretty hard by joey logano um that was and <laughs> he had a, a rough day we can get to Bubba Wallace here a little bit later regarding some news about him but um but it just feels like those couple laps were all that we really have to talk about this race I mean this really <laughs> didn't feel like much of a compelling race aside yeah. from those moments where Reddick and Chase were going at it because this basically up until that point was the Chase Elliott show which yeah, I figured right. it would be which is why I picked him to win um and this race just was not it was just, you know, you wrote that article on on um, Tyler Reddick's son and how despite all this hoopla and all this celebration in victory lane, he's just zonked out. Can't dead even to wake the world. Up. Dead, dead to, to the, the world. world. <laughs> and that, I feel like that's sort of like a microcosm of how this race was. It's like, <laughs> it's like yes, there's this popular driver who the fans love and is really well respected and liked within the paddock and the garage area. Um, and everyone's happy this has happened. But on the whole, like the race just 
left a little something to be desired. And we didn't get quite into this with the Daniel Suarez win a couple of years ago. I mean, a couple of weeks ago, excuse me, at Sonoma, because we had our special friend. The last Gabriel three weeks on. have felt like two years, to be fair. Yeah. <laughs> That's so welcome to our 30s. Um, but uh, in that episode, we spent more time celebrating the win for Suarez just because it was so historic than actually getting into the nuts and bolts of that race. But I think we yeah. both agree that the Sonoma race left some to be desired as well, just oh, yeah. what America did. So, I mean, the Coda put on a good race. Yeah, but so, it but, really, really did. Well, after the first after the first stage, it was a good race. Uh, yeah, after the first stage. <laughs> but Suarez it just seems it like, yes, yes. It just seems like, I don't know if it's tracks or if it's the car, if it's both, but it just seems like the road, the road course package hasn't put on a good race most of the time. And, it, and this car was specifically designed to help put on good races at road courses. Um, yeah, and I... And, I, I we, uh, Michael McDowell, I, I, I interviewed, I didn't interview him. He had a press conference last, last week and I asked him like, how different is this car compared to what you had before? And he said, because you know, everyone assumed this would be the case. It was going to make it like the car was going to be good for road course racing. Um, not, well, not good for it. It was, it would be a better road course car. Yeah. And, and he, he said like, it really hasn't changed anything about, road course racing except maybe you can like break a little bit deeper into the turn but other than that it's he said it's pretty similar to what what they had with the, the last generation of car so given that it's it is weird <laughs> that you know after the the awesome race we got at coda the last two road course races haven't been much to write home about so i don't know we still got a lot more road courses um i think you know we the one major difference between uh, Coda and Sonoma and Road America is like Coda didn't have a lot of elevation changes, um, whereas Sonoma has a lot, and uh, there, there's hills and stuff also, you know, at, at Road America. So maybe that has something to do with it. I don't know, um, but we're gonna get to some road courses that don't have those, specifically Indianapolis. That's a flat track. Yes, um, and then Watkins Glen has a, some elevation yeah it, yeah it has some terrain up, but it doesn't go up to the s's but that's really yeah it's really it it's not it's not nearly the level that you see at coda or um or certainly road america um i'm trying to think um i mean what else is there really to say i mean no tyler reddick had a great he had a great pit stop to, to sort of close the gap there on on pit lane and he was right on chase elliott's bumper coming out of pit road um, and those couple laps were really compelling. And it looked like once Reddit got around, Elliot, Elliot was going to have something for him. Um, and, you know, you say it was with 17 to go. I mean, that's still more than 60 miles. It's more than 70 miles of that track because it's so long. Yeah. Um, and so you, you wonder if tire wear, if, if, you know, Reddit used up all of his tires or something. And Elliot was just saving his tires for a longer run because there was really not much in the way of cautions at this race. Um, no, there were, and, there, were, and, there were no cautions outside the stage breaks. Nope. Nope, Which and there was only one pass for the lead on under green, right? That was the only yeah. one. And but, I mean, like I said, that it technically wasn't the lead at the time. So no, it wasn't. No, it was so, like eighth or ninth place or something. Yeah. So, but he cycled to the lead. So, um, yeah, no, it's still, uh, it's still, it's still cool for Tyler Reddick to get the win. Um, again, just because you mentioned, I mean, he definitely had more pedigree of the drivers that he came into the sport with, at least the Cup Series level with, because um, yeah. he won back to back Xfinity championships with two separate teams. He saw the writing yeah. on the wall at Junior Motorsports that Hendrick was not going to be, um, was not going to be uh, as easy a way to get to the Cup Series. So he made the the switch over to RCR. Um, and even then, I mean, uh, Austin Dillon won some races uh, before he did, didn't he, as well? Um, and I know that Tyler Reddick has a bit more pedigree than Dillon. Um, oh, yeah, still, like, that... uh, 20, and was, it, was it last year? No, Austin Dillon won. Austin Dillon won at Texas. Yeah, it was last a couple year. Years yeah. ago. That, Reddick was second to him in mm -hmm. that race. So, uh, but really, like, if it, like I, asked, I asked Richard Childers about this on Sunday. It's like, this is like the first RCR win that was a convincing win in a very long time yes <laughs> because dating back to their last four wins before this dating back to like brian newman's final win at phoenix in 2017 were all either because of late race pit strategy uh a few mileage race like the coke 600 or a last lap crash the d2500 uh which opened the door for austin dillon to win so this is like running up front and then taking the lead from the leader convincingly and then running away 
I mean, th this is, it's not the most dominating children's performance. That would actually be Tyler Reddick at uh, Auto Club uh, back in uh, February. Uh, oh. that, that was the most that was the most dominating single car RCR yeah, performance I agree. since 2014, which was Harvick's last year. Yeah, he had he had the car to beat, and then he had like he get involved in the accident. Cut tire. Engine blow up tire. Cut, that's tire, cut a tire. Yep. So um so and we specifically mentioned how poorly Reddick had been running since the Bristol dirt race. Yeah. Um I'm looking at his stats here. Up, well, up that, in, well, he finished second at Darlington. Yeah, uh, he's only had so, but he only had two top tens since Bristol dirt race. When he finished, you know, 39th, yeah. 30th. 30th 35th 18th 16th yeah he just seemed like he hit a rut um and yeah. he picked i mean he picked a good day to have a good day especially as we've mentioned you know the the slots for the playoff grid uh keep shrinking um, there's, I only, specific... there's only three spots left yeah so. and i i didn't pick him to win a race i thought we would just get blaming truex harvick and that'd be it we'd go back to just repeat winners the rest of the way so um no it was it was it was nice to see and what i what i think was really neat about this um I had, did you know who his sponsor was before you ever Googled it? Sorry. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I couldn't like describe the product to you, but I had a, like an idea of what it was supposed had, to be. I had no clue. I, um, I knew he was sponsored by Cheddar's. I obviously I know what that is, the restaurant, but oh, I know that, that's, how, that's what I meant to intro you as, uh, John Lafollette, loyal Cheddar's. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did. I did go to Cheddar's the night he won the race. I did not go on Monday when they had the promo for the free chicken tenders with the purchase of an entree. No, we are not getting paid for this sponsorship or endorsement of Cheddar's. Um, but uh, I did not go. But Cheddar's, too if you're listening. <laughs> yeah, if you're listening, yes. Um, but uh, I was too busy on the Fourth of July uh, to make a trip to Cheddar's. But I did go to Cheddar's uh, after the race uh, to celebrate. Um, and but I but for the three cheese, I don't even pronounce it. Three cheese. Three, three, three. cheese. Uh, I just remember when I, I I first saw that his car at the at Daytona because that's who sponsored him the Daytona five hundred. I was like, whose idea was to put it, was it to put this sponsor on the eight and not the three? <laughs> <laughs> I I had no idea what it was. I always just assumed it was like um, like a manufacturing company or something uh, that's sort of integrated with the rest of RCR's business at large. That's what Penske does with um, like like Shell and Penzoil and things like that. I figured that's what it was. So when he's leading and they show the back of his car with the website three chi I was like, okay, fine, I'll, I'll I'll see what this is. And I had no idea it was like weed products. I had no idea it was like edible weed products. I was like, word. We're about to have ed ed edible <laughs> weed products that Richard Childress uses because he had a back surgery recently, like in the post-race press conference. He said, I want to, yeah, I, 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 had, I messed up my back, got surgery. And so I'll be using some of those products tonight. I'm like, <laughs> all, all, all right. <laughs> all right. Like, like the future is here. It's 2022 and weed is in victory lane in a NASCAR cup series race. Um, I don't know if that's the first time. It's the first time probably in my lifetime that's happened. This is funny, this is funny that a deeply conservative Richard Childress was like, yeah. Oh yeah. And I was just going to say like, you know, like I know that Richard Childress and I probably don't see eye to eye on a lot of things, if not anything, when it comes to our socio-political views. Um, but he certainly deserves some credit for this, because um, a lot I, you and I both know for a fact that Roger Penske would not allow that. He doesn't even allow Ryan uh, Ryan Blaney to have a beard or a mustache, which is insane. Um, I don't. I think we're to the point where actually Roger Penske is okay with it. I think it just Ryan does it kind of okay. out of his own thing. He, okay. he, he'll, he grows it all out during the off season and then cleans up to start the year. Yeah. But no, that's what I'm saying. Like, I think he's, <laughs> I think he, I think he cleans up because like, it's in it, like, it's a Penske thing that you cannot yeah. have facial hair. So like, like, that's why in the off season, he looks like Robert Redford in that one gif where he like nods <laughs> yeah. approvingly at the camera. I forget what movie that is, but like, he looks like Robert Redford in the gif. Oh, wow. And then he shows up at Daytona with like a 12 year old because he has a baby face. Um, but also how hilarious would it be if Blaney was sponsored by weed products? And, you know, like, hey, Logano, do you know you can save at the dispensary if you use advanced auto parts? Like, dude. And you like, you cuts... say it to the dispensary? Yeah. <laughs> and, and it cuts to Logano. He's like hot boxing in his car. He's like, bro, I'm way ahead of you, man. It's... Oh, I wish that would happen. But oh, and Logano has that kind of face. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, he does. He totally has that kind of face. Yeah. Denny Hamill made fun of him for it. Yeah. That's short track racing. Um, but, <laughs> um, but like, you and I both know that Penske would probably shoot that down. 
um, you and I both know that Hendrick would probably shoot that down. So would Joe Gibbs. I think he like, would shoot it, that like, down too. They, like Hendrick doesn't even do beer sponsors anymore. No, which which is I don't which amazes me. Um, yeah. So, I mean, it's just it you know credit where credit is due. Like I said, you know, um, <laughs> NASCAR. A lot of owners in NASCAR are old money who have a certain way of thinking, who come from a certain time where, you know, marijuana is still something to be frowned upon, even as it's being legalized throughout the country at the state level. Yeah. I mean, like even a state as deep red as Indiana is considering legalizing it purely for the money because Ohio, Michigan, and Illinois have legalized it. And there's dispensaries right across the state border. I'm sure Richard Childress saw how much 3G was willing to pay. He's like, okay, all right. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, but like you know, I'm just saying, like, like say Ryan Blaney goes out there and secures the same contract. Like Penske might nix it. Mm-hmm. Um, so, Gibbs yeah. and Hendricks might nix it. So I'm just saying, like, credit to that team for going outside of the bounds of otherwise conventional thinking um, or conventional economics of the sport and allowing an otherwise unconventional sponsor to sponsor your race car driver. And you know, now they're in victory lane together. I think that's I think that's neat. It's cool. It's Speaking cool to victory see. Lane. One thing I snagged during the the post-race celebration in victory lane I, I i picked up one of the corks for one of the champagne bottles they they popped oh yeah so now i have you have a cork from tyler reddick's first cool <laughs> that's, that's cool <laughs> don't you also have like a beer can or something uh, yeah collection? i have a beer can that that ty dylan had at his post-race press conference after he won at indy in 2014 okay you never he didn't even drink it it was just there or or I mean, maybe he did, maybe he took so I don't know. But yeah, I do have his beer can. <laughs> nice. I'm oh, trying to oh, think. oh, I also have a Miller Lite can from Brad Kozlowski's post-race shindig at Phoenix that he did with, all, with his team down on Pitt Road. My mom <laughs> has an autographed Danica Patrick wine bottle. Which, like, so my, there's a Kroger in Brownsburg, Indiana, which is my folks live. My mom just works there part time. She's retired, but just gives her something to do. And Danica Patrick was in there a couple months ago for some reason. Like, the Indy 500 wasn't even in town yet, but Pat, Pat, Dan Patrick was in, in, in Indy. Okay. And so she just, and like, her line of her Danica brand of wine just came out. It was at Kroger. And she just walked up to my mom and she was like, Hey, do you have a marker? And like, my mom, like, who knows racing, who goes to the 500 and like knows who Danica Patrick is, was like, oh my God, you're Danica Patrick. She's like, yeah, I have a wine. I, my wine just came out. Do you have a marker? I'm going to autograph some bottles. She's like, yeah, sure. So she goes and grabs a marker and Danica Patrick stays in the Kroger and just signs a bunch of bottles there. My mom was like, can I have one too? She's like, yeah, she sure. just there by herself doing that? Yeah, she was just there by herself, just on a whim, just out and about doing some grocery shopping, saw her, 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 her line of wine there, just signed a bunch of bottles for people who just happened to buy them. So now I don't think my mom will ever drink it. She's not too much of a drinker, but I was like, I text her, I was like, mom, I have to get a bottle of wine. Um, and so she did. So, but it's not, no, it wasn't not anything that was actually at the track. That's a much cooler story. Well, I, 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 have stuff you got, but... I have a Danica Patrick question. So, sure. The year that was her year at the Indy 500. 2005? When she, when she took the lead. How yes. loud was it? Oh, it was incredibly loud. I can't think of the only time I've heard a crowd cheered that heavily was when Elio won his fourth race. Mm. It's probably, yeah, that was, I'll never forget. And like people like were like booing Weldon when he passed it. Like oh, yeah. people, people were booing Weldon. Um, but yeah, that was in terms of just volume and crowd reaction, the only thing that beats it is probably Elio winning his fourth one, and rightly so. I'm, so. Betting, I'm betting the only other, the, the only NASCAR equivalent is when Dale Jr. takes the lead at Talladega. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Probably the only equivalent. Yeah, yeah that was... I just, remember, I just remember watching that race live and like, wow, they are, re- that crowd, they really, 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 really love her. They're yep. really excited for this. Yep, so. that was, oh, what, what could have been. I just... I just wonder what would have happened if she just would have stayed in IndyCar. I mean, I know the money in NASCAR is not even yeah. close to close to comparable, but like, so I don't blame her for that. But I just, I wonder, I, I wonder what would have happened because she, especially at the Indy 500, like she was a damn good Indy 500 driver. I think she finished in the top 10 every time she finished all 500 miles. She only has two DNFs and she finished in the top 10 every time she finished it. So I think she has, I think she has three top fives. Like she, oh. she was really good at that race, and I, I wonder what could have been. But that's obviously for. I just um, wish she had done like, a, done a second year of Xfinity Series before she moved up. I don't, I understand why they didn't, yeah. um, but I wish she would have. So. I agree. No, I'm I'm with you. It's I mean she's despite all that she's still the most successful uh, 
woman driver of my lifetime, just across the board. Um, but uh, I, mean, I think we talked about it on the last episode. And then the episode we did with Gabriel mentioned all the, the women that are currently on their on their way up through the through the various circuits. So we can talk about that at a later juncture. But anyway, um, back on topic. Back on topic. Uh, <laughs> um, so all right, well, Saturday, I, I, Saturday, yes, Xfinity race, which was won by uh, Ty Gibbs with the last lap pass of defending Cup Series champion Kyle Larson. Uh, but that's not what anyone's going to remember about that race. No. Nope. What they will remember, though, is what happened on lap 25 when uh, Noah Graxon, driver of Junior Motorsports number nine Chevrolet, had a little run in with Sage Karam, part time IndyCar driver who, who dr- drove the number 45 uh, for Alpha Prime Racing. Uh, they had a little run in and turn one, then another run in and turn two, and then Noah Graxon didn't like that run in. Uh, no. he, he had gotten briefly pushed off course quickly got back on track and then immediately turned right into Sage Karam's left rear uh, fender, sending him, sending them both around and causing a 13 car pileup on a straightaway Uh, dust and dirt and smoke going everywhere, obscuring views, 13 car wreck, and then a brief health scare over uh, Brandon Brown, who was Mm -hmm. uh, hurt, you know, kind of like, yeah, he was up. doubled over in pain, like yeah. leaning up against the wall. It looked like it was like a rib injury or something. Cup, cup check. Yep. Cup shot. Cup shot. Mm-hmm. That's, what it, that's what it was. Had, had the air knocked out. <laughs> so, yep. Um, but yeah, no graction. Intentional wreck that went really, really bad. No penalty at so far that was announced at the race, which I was shocked at that there wasn't a penalty in the race. Same. Uh, and this morning on Series X and NASCAR Radio, uh, Elton Sawyer, a NASCAR official said, everything is on the table for potential consequences for Mr. Gregson, including a fine, suspension, nothing at all, which wouldn't be surprised, surprised there was nothing at all. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, I'm going to lean towards fine. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, it's Noah Gregson. He's a hothead. But yes. Um, that what he did was completely, completely uncalled for. Right. No, I agree. I texted um, you the minute it happened. Yeah. You said, yeah, yeah. You said need to be parked. Yeah. He should have been parked. He, but, yeah, wepo- like, he, he weaponized a race car. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. like, you know, I, I, I'm all for, I love the personalities of, of, of NASCAR and auto racing. I like watching drivers go at it on the track. I like rough racing. I like hard racing. I don't like dirty racing. Um, I don't know if I would constitute what Karen was doing as dirty racing. They were just racing hard for position necessarily. No. Um, and, you know, I like it when drivers get out of their cars at the end of the race and they could go up to each other in pit road and sometimes they're out of fisticuffs. I like that. Um, I think that's fun. I think that's it's healthy for the sport in a weird way. I think that's something that draws people's attention to the sport. Um, what I don't think is good, obviously, is when you just – intentionally take your car and use it as a weapon to create a crash because someone got under your skin. And like we and especially in instances like this, where it's a restart at a track where there's already, um, you know, difficulty for spotters and everything. And there's, it's, it's such a, a vast area of land. You can't possibly see it, uh, cover all of it with spotters. Um, but then there's dust and debris going around and, you know, Brandon Brown just T-boned a parked car. And, you know, we seriously, like you said, we had a serious health scare with him thinking he was going to have to go to the hospital because he was just doubled over in pain, grabbing his ribs. I thought maybe he broke something. Um, over what? Over Noah Gregson's bruised ego? Over his hurt feelings? Like, you, you got to be better than that. Especially, like, that goes across the board for any driver, obviously. But especially if you are in a top ride in the extended level, driving for a major team, and you're a playoff uh uh, he's already in the playoffs, right? So, like, he's he, there's a chance he could he could win a championship. Like, you're a championship contending driver for a championship contending team. And Sage Karam, I'm not no disrespect to Sage Karam, but like, he's just a part timer in the series. But he was running t- sixth. He was running up front. Yeah, he was running well. Like, yeah, yeah he for, had a good car. He had a good car, and a, for a small team, you know, he's just a, he's a road course ringer because that's his background in IndyCar. car. Um, it's not really. It's not just be the bigger person. <laughs> like you know if, 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 if you've got qualms if, if you've got qualms with um sage caribs racing talk to him about it after the race confront him after the race and you know it, well he's never and every time Gregson has had some sort of thing with another driver 
he's never been the bigger person. Like it's true. Yeah. Like the whole thing with was it who was it? Um last year at Homestead, David Starr. Uh David Starr cut a tire while racing in front of Noah Gregson, who had the lead, and pl- Gregson plowed into him, and then Gregson, you know, went off on him post race, and then just I can't remember exactly what he said, but what he said was just completely uncalled for. Um, and then he, you've had the thing where he gets into a fight with Harrison Burton uh, the year before that at uh, can, was it Kentucky? I think it was Kentucky. There was uh, Daniel Hamrick too, wasn't it? That, well, that was that was last year. Yeah, in Atlanta. Yeah, he got into a fight with Daniel Hamrick after um, uh, was it Gregson backed into Hamrick's car on pit road mm-hmm. while flipping him off. Yeah, for, for some reason I, I don't remember what transpired right before that, but yeah, he had a fight. And it's like he's just never shown himself to be the b- bigger person when it comes to stuff like this. Um, and of course, Tommy Joe Martins, who was Sage Karam's owner, you know, tweeted at K- Kelly Onhart Miller, uh, like right after the accident, saying that was completely intentional. I'm sure you're embarrassed about this, Kelly. Should she, she responded later saying, "No, I'm not embarrassed." Uh, but we're we're gonna take care of it in the proper way or something like that. Which right, right. He tried to sound like a tough guy, like you know, yeah, Karam started it, but I finished it. It's like oh, con- great, congrats. You still look like you still look like the idiot here. You still look like the bad guy. You're the one that still has egg on your face because you took it to a level that it did not need to go. Yeah, you unnecessarily took it to a level it did not need to go. And I'm just looking at Wikipedia here. He's only ten months younger than William Byron. He's only 10 months younger than William Byron. And look where William Byron's at. And look where Noah Gregson's at. William, William, By- <laughs> William, <laughs> William Byron's been more successful. Yeah, he's been more successful. Been, but, I'm just, um, but I'm just saying, so, like, just like just like maturity level. Like, like yeah, Byron, yeah. Like, 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 look at the incident that happened with Byron and Lagan earlier this year. Like, yeah, Byron was, had, was, was infuri- infuriated and he was very upset. And you could see him on pit road, like Jeff Gordon having to talk, you know, calm him down before he went on, on camera uh, to give his... Uh, uh, post-race interview well, like william, william byron's at that point where like he, he called i think he called Lugano like a moron or something yeah, like that and i'm yeah. like oh, scandalous yeah like <laughs> i mean you know my point being like you know like these are yeah. drivers that are for the same intensive purposes are the same age yeah. but look where yeah. they're at look how they conduct themselves so that wait so that means gregson is 20 he's 23 23 he's, 20, he's 23, 23. okay he just right. he will he will be 24 in 10 days. He's born on July 15th. So um, and again, I'm not trying to say, you know, I, you know, Byron's one of the more squeaky clean guys in terms of his his image and the way he presents himself in the sport. And I'm not saying every driver has to present themselves like that. I'm not saying you have to, you know, completely neuter the aggressive aspect of your personality. Like I think it's cool that I think it's it's good for drivers to show their personality. That's why I think you know, drivers like Kyle Bush are so are so necessary and important for the sport, but like you can't use a race car as a weapon and you can't double down on it and try and act like a tough guy. Like you could be the bad boy or the, the yeah. black cat without being a, a jerk. Yeah. Like you could do that. Yep. Somebody show Kyle Bush how to do that. Yeah. <laughs> like and, exactly. And and it's not even like, I know it can be a fine line, but not in this instance. It's black and white. Like you weaponized your car and you ruined 13 other drivers' day, including a guy who seemed like he was physically hurt over again, your bruised ego. Like be do be Dale Earnhardt. Dale Earnhardt was a black hat, wasn't an ass. Exactly. <laughs> so. Right? Yeah. It's I mean, it can be done. And it just seems and like Sage Karam said uh in his interview after he got cleared from the medical center, like, you know, it just seems like he's just incapable of changing. It just seems like this is just who he is at this point, unless he gets an even bigger wake-up call. And I'm hoping that NASCAR sort of brings the hammer down on this. Like, I don't know what it's gonna take. I mean, he should have been parked. Do you agree with me? He should have been parked. Oh yeah. I think he should be part of something. He should like, be part I mean, Yeah. Two black been... penalty. I don't know. Just like, but there was no yeah. consequences. There was no I mean, consequence. Like, like, like I said, Kelly Arnold Miller said, we'll, 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 we'll take care of it the, in the right way. It's like, how? Tell us. Yeah. What, yeah. Because this happens every time. <laughs> he should have been parked in the race. Um, I hope he gets a very heavy fine. I hope he gets points taken away from him. I don't know about a race suspension, but like, something's got to be shown that like this can't be tolerated anymore and especially like, if, if, if Matt, you Matt, Ken- Matt Kansas was suspended two races for what yeah. he did to, to Joey Logano um and th- that was between two full-time drivers in a mm-hmm. playoff race um, if you if you weaponize your car and you don't have that much of a penalty that's a that's a message to the rest of the sport 
saying it's saying it's it's you know it's it's uh it's it's full go which this, this, which this is, is dangerous part, this is part of the legacy of boys have at it yes which, which was uttered 12 years ago um ever, ever since that it's like all right that nascar you kind of you kind of uh pinning yourself into a hole to a degree uh by saying this so what does boys have at it and what's what's egregious uh the Matt Kenza thing egregious so where is this on that spectrum yep um so i mean like no i, I know i know like no Graxon's had like actual real life issues uh especially like with, with his dad uh he, he's incarcerated right now uh right. so right um, again yeah everyone's like, background's so, different i take yeah, that so, consideration like, too so yeah. i know he's had i know he's had a, a rough couple of years i know jeff gluck at the athletic actually did a story on noah and that touches on a lot of the his the stuff that comes with noah Graxon. so I, I would encourage everyone to go look that read that so yep um just not saying necessarily no Gregson's a bad person just or even a bad driver certainly he's not that he's just he's got to be smarter he's got to be better and that's just that's just obvious that's just I think anyone who I mean even even the even the guys on the on the broadcast with NBC were just like yeah this I mean they 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 called they called a spade a spade so um I don't think I have anything else really to say about Road America all right Um, okay I mean do we think do we think this is going to be on the schedule next year it seems like it's not all, all signs that we've been hearing are that they're going to go to the Chicago street course next year for July 4th. That, that, that's what uh, Jordan Bianchi at the athletics said. He, he, everything he's, he's heard is that Chicago street course, July 4th next year. Yeah, Sure. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah. If you're NASCAR, how do you not say, yeah, yeah I mean, you have yeah, to. I mean, I, like I said, I liked road America. NASCAR should be going to road America. Um, but if you have the opportunity to yeah go race on a street course, do something you've never done before, and the third biggest market in the country. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Yeah, I mean it's 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 that's that's that sort of decision is totally an economic reason, and it's definitely not an anti Road America reason. I think I would still like to see the Cup race, uh, the Cup Series race, Road America, but I still want to see a better road course product just across the board, really, for this car. Um, I don't know if if it just takes more engineering and development, or if it's maybe just the tracks. I I don't know, but like 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 I've said, something needs to be fixed here or or, or reevaluated because we're 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 three road courses in, and only one's been I would say compelling. So, um, but nonetheless, congrats to Tyler Reddick. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he has memories that his son will never have. So good for him. <laughs> I like I I don't know if you you watched the video interview that I had with. His girlfriend, which it was at, it's at the bottom of the, the story on the front stretch website, where I was talking to her, and it's like you're gonna have to hold this over his head, right? Like, <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, he's been talking about this for a year now, his dad winning, and now he's asleep for it all. So I was like, <laughs> like I, I want, I want to tell her, man, I can't wait till he's he's like a sassy thirteen year old, and you're like, uh, uh-uh, I don't want it. You you were asleep for your dad's first win. You don't get to talk. Yep. <laughs> or like you know or if he goes the racing circuit and he wants to race like his dad or whatever like that'll be the clip we always see of his like bio like every like like because we we, we always see the clips of chase elliott with with like with his dad like kissing the bricks all that yeah that's gonna be the thing you asleep in the duffel bag that rcr kept all the sponsor hats for for the head (laughs) (laughs) it's so good such a good story such a good story how, how, how many how many sponsors do you think were represented in that bag, John. Oh gosh, at least I would say at least ten. Nine. They're, nine sponsors okay. from nine, or hats from representing nine sponsors were packed into this duffel bag. <laughs> <laughs> does every team have that every week? Did they ever? Does every team have that duffel bag just ready to go every week? I, I mean, they, the hat's got to be somewhere to do the hat dance. So Man, I want to know like who's in charge of that? Like who's in charge of like the duffel, but the hat bag. <laughs> every week like that because that's like a serious like you can't be like no matter what team you are you never know what's going to happen like your week could be the week and like you keep it like, well, think about it well, think like about damn it. it bill you left the hat bag at home i'm sorry you know well, think <laughs> like, about it uh when when suarez won he had that custom flag yes when, when ross chastain won he also had a custom flag so yes t- teams do have like these things hidden away just in case <laughs> 
I just, I just want to know like whose, whose job is it to have to remember that? Cause you can't, you can't forget it. The hat dance, the hat dance is important. Um, Ch- Chesting has a watermelon too. So on top yeah, of that, yeah. so we'll get the watermelon. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it, Bill, you forgot the watermelon. I'm sorry. Um, it's always like, a, like, you can't leave that job to an intern. Like every other profession, you would leave that job to an intern, but you can't at the cup level because it's, it's too important. Um, R- R- like for T. Pinsky, Roger Pinsky is, he, he, he's the double bag guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> what if like Roger Penske, just to circle back, what if he's like a like a like a secret, like a, a, a closet pothead? Okay, I'm not going there. Not going there. I'm not, I'm like he's not obviously there. not, but like I'm just saying, like, what if he is? Anyways, um you know, uh moving on from, from Road America, you and I both saw a movie, not together, but separately, uh last we saw week. Together in spirit. We saw it together in spirit. It was the new documentary on Kyle Bush, Rowdy. Yes, um, yes, Fathom Events. Yes. Uh, one night only showing of Rowdy, the Kyle Bush story, in, in theaters last last Wednesday. I went and saw it here in Fayetteville with my dad. Uh, even though I'm in no way, shape, or form a Kyle Bush supporter, if there's if there is a NASCAR product in theaters, I will give it my money to show my support because <laughs> because we need more of that. Um, For sure. Yes. Uh, I, I I walked out of it. My dad said, "What'd you think?" I said, "Good documentary." Kyle Bush is still a jerk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's 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 prickly to say the least. Um, he is not someone that is easily likable um, as much as you can respect their talent. But um, no, I, I thought it was a good documentary. It was a little puffy at times, but most documentaries like this are puffy, especially um, if you're good. Uh, yeah, you know what I mean. Like where where the uh, um, where the main subject of the uh, documentary allows so much access, they usually ask for a little editorial leeway their way. I mean, look at Michael Jordan in The Last Dance. I mean, the only reason he agreed to do that was so he could produce it and have some sort of say over the narrative of him. That's why a lot of um, his uh, uh, more uh, uh, less... Well- some of his more problematic things were just sort of like conveniently glossed over in that in that well, documentary. That, it was that still was, a good that, documentary, that, though. Well, that was the point, kind of, of this Kyle Bush documentary. There, there, you can't gloss over anything, like, no. because this this is Kyle Bush. This is him cursing out NASCAR officials and giving them giving them the bird. <laughs> like, that's that's it. This is Kyle Bush. Yes. Um. So it, it's. I mean, it, it 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 did provide some you know some insight into stuff that I would maybe um, wasn't aware of about Kyle, Kyle Bush, um, but you know it just also reminded me of you know so many things uh, like addressing the whole wrecking Ron Hornaday under caution. Um, he's like, should I have done it? No, uh, but like you know, I was I, do, I, do I regret doing it? No, also no. Um, yeah, I mean, that, yeah, that was basically like every instance he was like asked about something controversial he did. He's like, should I have done it? No. Am I sorry? No. Like, do you regret, like, do you regret talking shit about Dale Earnhardt Jr. and getting everyone in NASCAR pretty much to hate you just from the minute you stepped in the door? I mean, should I have said, kept my mouth shut? Yeah. Am I glad I did? Am I glad I said something? Yeah. Like, he did, <laughs> that was, like rinse and repeat. Next controversy. Well, I mean, it, you know, it did, one interesting aspect is like, you know, he did catch flack from fans just because he was Kurt Busch's brother. He yeah. driver intros for his first first Bush series race, he gets booed. It's like mm-hmm. what? I like yeah. I just got here. Yeah. So like it's it's like this baked in thing. Like that's like true. He, it's it's it, it's not fair. Um, but I mean, also, we're, like, we're, we're already seeing series, this with Ty Gibbs. So like yeah, like like the whole thing with the truck series where he got pulled. Uh, after like multiple races because they, they made the rule that you had to be 18 because, which I didn't realize was that it was, it was because of the sponsor for a race that was cigarettes. I think it, yes. I think it was Marlboro. Yeah. Marlboro. Yeah. Marlboro, like Marlboro I, I wasn't aware of that yeah. part. I thought they had just like arbitrarily 18 years old. Can't do it. Oh no, no. Because he was a 17 year old or whatever it, in a race sponsored by cigarettes. I, did, I, I mean, didn't, know, didn't know that. But at the same time, again, that was also back in the day when like cigarette companies could still sponsor races. I mean, they they can't do that now. Um, yeah. uh, but I remember I forget who it was. There was one race that where 
uh, someone less than under the age of 21 won. Maybe it was Trevor Bain that did 2500. Like after he won, they were like clearing out the winner's circle of like all the beer and all the alcoholic product stuff and all the labels and stuff. I, I'm not sure if it was Trevor Bain, but there was another race at the Cup Series level. He where just dry- turned 21. So was he 21? I thought he was okay. Like, there was he, there was like, someone else in day, like days earlier. <laughs> there was 21. someone else. I forget who it was. There was someone else who won. They weren't 21. Um, Maybe it was an IndyCar level. Maybe it was IndyCar. Uh, there was okay. some race I saw where like the alcoholic beverages were immediately removed. The logos had to be covered up and everything. Um, but yeah, that was the the the, the early 2000s when cigarette companies could still sponsor uh, NASCAR events. Um, also, one thing. I'm glad the documentary touched on was his relationship with Ricky Hendrick, Rick Hendrick's son. Yes, yes. Because I wasn't aware of that dynamic. And what lose when Ricky Hendrick was killed in the plane crash, the Hendrick Motorsports plane crash on the way to Martinsville in 04, um, that, that very much opened up this door of like, what if? Like, if, mm-hmm. if Ricky Hendrick's there, does Kyle Bush develop into the same person that he? is today or would have, would he have been more reined in um yeah it definitely seems like that was a defining moment for him um it, you could definitely tell with the way that he spoke about his relationship with ricky even as he was recalling it all these years later that that was still something that he carried with him um and you could get the sense that, that he was still mourning and mourning the loss of that friend and i think he also no- ponders that what if moment you know that because that that definitely seems like his you know his like it's like uh like his mickey to his rocky was gone um mm. and th- that that sort of that sort of person that could whisper in his ear and be the soothsayer was gone um, he's obi-wan kenobi yeah yeah you know that that mentor that mentor that 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 he could trust and confide in was gone and then it was just it was just all kyle bush's raw exposed nerves all the time after that um that that's fair to bring up um what i what i also didn't I like obviously his 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 crash that broke both of his legs was violent but I didn't realize just how violent it was when when he like talked about the gory gruesome details like when he said that like the engine was pushed in 18 yeah. inches and like the steering wheel was in his chest and in his chin and trying to pull himself out of a burning car with two legs that had basically been reduced to jello it's like ugh and to come back from that in just 3 months and still win a championship um no, like, like, like I said, uh, you cannot knock his talent, but man, he's just, <laughs> he, he, he does not uh, give a rat's ass if you like him or not. And, you know, I respect him for that. Yeah, he was a uh, Saturday at the, the, the media bullpen during qualifying. He, he was his typical prickly self, wasn't <laughs> in a talking mood, probably because he qualified not great and then he had to do an engine change. Which meant he was going to start from the rear. So yeah, he was... and, then he, and then he had a garbage race. There was that weird incident with him and Emerald where they both spun out without even like in separate yeah. distance in the same corner. And we, yeah. just never, we never really heard from Kyle Bush after that. Um, it was not that even we were hearing from him much to begin with. Where did he even finish? Let me look. Uh, da, 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 da. 29th. Yeah, it was not a good day for Toyota again. Martin Truex Jr. was 13th. That was the highest Toyota. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jenny Hamlin, 17th. Christopher Bell, 18th. Um, Bubba Wallace had his issues. Yes. 35th. Oh, I didn't realize he didn't even finish. Uh, yeah, they showed him like going off into like that turn five area where you can kind of go back, take those little zigzags by the tires, that little off-road area. Something happened to him. And there was also, like I said, that in-car camera showed like Logano hit him hard in the driver's side door. I don't know if that was. And, and then Bubba returned the favor. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Which was um, ex- expertly done too. Never even touched him. Um, so it still managed to get Joey Logano off course uh, later later in the race. So as uh, for, we, I was, no, I'm sorry. No, Kyle Busch finished 33rd. I'm sorry. No, no, wait, I'm sorry. I'm looking at the uh, Atlanta race. I was looking at the old, the old Atlanta stats before uh, we started talking about the Atlanta race. I apologize. Kyle Busch, um, 29th, 29th. Yes, 29th. But as for uh, Bubba, some news just broke in the last hour regarding his pit crew. Yes, Would you he's care yes. to tell the listeners. Yeah, uh, NBC reported it and confirmed that. Yeah, uh, after <laughs> all, the many misadventures of Bubba Wallace's pit crew, <laughs> there 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 will be a pit crew change uh, for him going into Atlanta Motor Speedway this weekend, where uh, his tire cha- tire carrier and tire changers are being swapped with Christopher Bell's team. 
So each team will have two new tire changes and a new tire carrier this weekend. Uh, though that doesn't change the fact that something could go screwy with <laughs> the pit guns. So yes. Uh, so who knows? But I, 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 they, they. I mean, I wish they'd done it sooner. But go, going into uh, Atlanta, where Bubba has a shot to to, to win, you, you want to get him the most competent pit crew possible. Yes. So that if, if he's up front, he doesn't lose. Who knows how many spots on pit road? So <laughs> right, gr- great, or, t- great, great timing. Or um, have another tire come off in the middle of a race where it's basically a mini restrictor plate race now, where everyone's bunched together, and now you've got a fifteen car pileup all because you just didn't get the the, the tire on right. Um, yeah, I, it's just one of those things where I'll believe it when I see it. I I I, 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 gen, I just I genuinely hope that this like solves well, on his, the first his... pit. Well, on the first pit stop Sunday. He gained one spot on pit road. <laughs> I, I tweeted in case you were wondering, but Wallace gained one spot on pit road and that tweet Good. blew up. <laughs> it's just, it's just, you know, it, the, the results speak for themselves and you can't really say much else about it. I just, I genuinely hope that, that whatever was ailing that pit crew um, has been solved. And I hope that they write the ship there because it's just been a year from like for, for all the highs, the track house has had 2311 is just the antithesis of that. I know Kurt Busch won and had a great race there at Kansas. Um, and he's, he's run pretty well this season yeah. and just, just Bubba, just Bubba by himself is just, on an island um and just the results do not speak to the talent that 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 he has nor the speed that that car has on, on. Well, well okay so saturday at the, the media bullpen at the track like the first like seven questions for bubba were about him cursing out the pit crew at nashville and all all that like the first seven and he was just not happy with the line of questioning. <laughs> and so i say say okay uh how do you feel about road america and he goes oh thank god <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i mean because again he's just like us like what else is there left to say like that's why he said what he said on the radio because like what the, you run out of words eventually well i i was fed up with it because every driver does it yes, yes. every driver gets mad on the radio and says stuff they shouldn't do Yes, I know. But he's under a microscope yeah. for various reasons. But, you yes. know, we see this across sports, you know, when 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 Tom Brady gets mad at his teammates, he's a leader. When Des Bryant does it on the sidelines, you know, he's he's act, he's out of control. And we and we know we know the context oh, there. We, and we know we know why that happens. And we know we know exactly why that narrative happens. So I'll just leave it at that. Um, but no, like I said, I genuinely hope. Yeah, him, him getting mad and cursing shouldn't be the story. The story should be. Pit crew keeps screwing up. Yeah, yeah. So no, yep. Because like I said, eventually words fail you, and if it happens, that I mean, I can't think of another time where, except maybe Kevin Harvick a a couple seasons ago, maybe 2015 or 16 or 14. I can't remember another time where they had there were enough pit pit uh, pit screw ups that warranted an entire graphic being made on a sports broadcast about it. Like they did that for Bubba Wallace's pit crew, and I can't remember another time this has happened. Yeah, I took a, I took a picture of that, tweeted it, and said, "Well, when you see it in writing." And yeah, that, that tweet, that tweet blew up. Like it, it, it like two like two thousand likes, a <laughs> bunch of retweets. I mean, it, what are, I mean, it, it, what are you supposed to say? You can't say anything else anymore. Um, but we can still talk about um, Atlanta. What do you think is going to happen? I like well, the last race. You couldn't look away. Uh, <laughs> no, no, <laughs> you, could, you couldn't look away. I mean, the last uh, last winner for that was William Byron. Early part of the season, Byron seemed to be like the guy at Hendrick. Um, he's really sort of come back down to earth here. He's not had a particularly good go of things since his last win at Martinsville. He does not. He only has one top ten, and that was. Well, a sen- remember, he 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 was two laps away from winning Darlington, and then Joe yep. Joe Logano happened. That's true. So he still came in at 13th at Darlington, but um, even since Darlington, again, just well, one like top he, 10. Even, he, even Alex Bowman hasn't been doing great lately. Um, right. Up until his win at Nashville, Chase Elliott hadn't been doing great for the four races before that. Maybe so. this is maybe this is uh, the hammer time. Hammer time. I'm sorry. <laughs> the dropping the hammer curse or reverse curse, where because we we said, "Hey, what's up with Tyler Reddick?" and then he won. Now we're like, "Hey, what's up with William Byron?" and then he'll just go like lead every lap of this race. Um, but. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, like you said, you couldn't look away. Um, but that hey, was because I, I, it was the first time in that configuration. I wonder, 
what this will be like now that drivers and fans know what to expect a bit more of. Well, you know, as you remember, the first race was marred by a lot of flat tires. Yes. From guys leading. Yes. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if teams have wisened up when it comes to the air pressures in their rear, right rears. So, um, because that there was, I think it happened to Tyler Reddick, Hepper Ross Chastain, mm-hmm. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Um, I think one other. Pretty, was it Larson? Pretty sure it happened to Larson too, didn't it? Like, I'm looking to see where Larson even finished in this race. Uh, I don't know. I but it happened see. multiple times. Yeah, point is, it happened multiple times. not something times. you ever see, really. It was only happening to the leaders. That, that, was, yeah. weird. that was a weird thing. Um, but I'm just grateful it's a shorter race. Uh, because yes, the, the last one was, was too 500 long. miles. Way too long. Oh, and it was longer than last year's spring race. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm, I'm glad it's going to be 400 miles. Um, I'm hoping for it'll be a good race again. Again, I, like I, I still don't think that there needs to be a mile and a half super speedway. I don't, I don't like that. I still don't. Um, but yeah, um, who's your, who's your pick for this weekend's races? <sighs> well, like you said, Bubba's got a shot, but I just, I can't just. Until until it happens, it, if it happens, I'll be surprised. But I just I can't I can't just given the way his season's gone, the way the, pit, the way things pit, the way his pit crew's gone. I know they made changes, but man, I it's really hard. It's really hard to make a, a guess on this. I at the risk of, of being redundant here, you know, Ross Chastain has come in second place two of the last three times here. Forty second, yeah. I will. Yeah, he, led, he led 42 laps. That's what I meant to say. Yeah. In yeah. Sport, 42 laps. I, 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 I'm going to pick Chastain. That'll okay. be my pick. Um, obviously, would love to see Bubba win. I, I, my pick's going to be Chastain. Although I did pick Blaney. And I said, I, I did say last week, Blaney, Truex, and Harvick are going to win at some point. I probably should pick one of those three just to stick with that. But I, I'm going to stay. I want to go with Chastain. Um, you don't have to. You don't have to ride with Tyler Reddick anymore because he won. No, so no. now, <laughs> so so now you're free. He's 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 released you. My race pick is is a is a, is a free agent now. Uh, is now taking offers. Um, a lot of different guys led this race, like a lot. Um, does it say how many how many people led? Lead there, like there was forty six lead changes. Um, Byron led 111 laps. Chastain led 42. Suarez led 13. Chase Elliott led 29. All those drivers came in the top six. Yeah, Ryan Blaney led 15 laps. He finished 17th. Christopher Bell led 16. Finished 23rd. True. That was that, that was actually that was after he went below the line. Yes. On the final lap, he would have finished second, and that's what moved Chastain up. Shurex um, came in eighth. So oh boy. Um man. I'm gonna go with Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Okay. Uh, he, he led 22 laps, but then like I said, he cut his tire. Uh, the, the tire went flat while he was leading. He's good at super speedways. Um, so I'm gonna take Ricky Stenhouse Jr. And it seems like he's been doing decently well this season. Oh um, no, he he at one point, had three straight top tens Go, going yeah. into Gateway. He had three straight top tens for the first yeah. time in his career. He had four straight top tens. Oh, Dover, four, oh. Yeah, four. Yeah. Okay. Dover, so, Darlington, okay, Kansas. That's and, right. and, uh, I, wrote sto- I wrote a story about that. I should I should have the number right. But yeah, four. four. <laughs> yeah. He's, I mean, since kind of cooled back, come back down to earth, 16th and 19th. But like, no, he, he's genuinely having a, a strong season. Yeah. And, and again, like, he's obviously a, a good uh, super speedway racer. So that would not surprise me and at all. Sh- shout out to William. To, so Michael McDowell, he finished in the top 10 on Sunday. So he now has seven top 10s, furthering his career best uh, top 10 total. And we're only through 18 races. So good for him. Good to so. see the little good to see the little guys do well. Um, yeah, I don't know if I like that Chastain pick, but I'll, I'll ride with it. it. There's nothing at stake here. It's armless. It doesn't matter. So what is at stake, though? What, what I really take pride in is our Jeff Gluck versus Rotten Tomatoes poll. Yep. <laughs> Time so. for round three. <laughs> um, 
So yes, this week on the Jeff Gluck was it a good race poll on Twitter, the the race at Road America did not did not fare well. It uh, only scored. Where is it? I gotta find it. I gotta find it. Uh, 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 he scored a fifty five point six on Rotten Tomato. <laughs> 55.6 on Twitter. <laughs> That's down from 78.4% for last year's Road America race. Uh, it's the third lowest race of 2022. That's that's only above Martinsville and the All-Star Star race. And it ranks number 20 out of 23 road course races in the poll with only 2021 Coda, 2018 Sonoma, and 2019 Sonoma as lower. So, Mr. LaFollet. You have chosen your fighter, correct? Yes. All right. You you go first. Okay. So last week I made it Nashville theme because that's where the race was. Um, and I tried to go with something patriotic or American or some movie with American on the on in the title. And I just decided to completely scrap that. We are in the middle of summer. It's summer blockbuster season. You know, we had big hits like Top Gun and Jurassic World and Thor's about to come out. So I just went with the big blockbuster um and one of the best block but i don't know if he's one of the best one of the most successful economically successful blockbuster directors is michael bay so i chose uh 2007's transformers fun 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 okay so did you get before before rowdy started did you get the ad for the fathom like anniversary yes. so yes like, 15th, the, the 15th one, back to back, anniversary back, the back to back fathom they advertised a 25th anniversary screening of been a black followed by the 15th anniversary of transformers and i like i'm sitting there going like okay i like both those movies all right one of them is not like the other no no <laughs> no one is one is one is one is a cult classic and the other is a the, transformers the, movie the, the best transformers movie <laughs> like yes the best uh, yeah well no bumblebee was really bumblebee good. was very good i love bumblebee, bumblebee. Was, very bumblebee good. was very good they finally got the tone right they yes. finally they finally yes. got it right um so but of the michael bay of the michael bay <laughs> yes it is the best yes and no, i never not, watched i never watched past the third one i never watched past the second one the second one is generally one of like the 10 worst movies i've ever seen oh my Oh, the second one is one of the ten worst movies I've ever seen. I, 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 just, I did not watch. Uh, I remember else sitting in the that. theater watching that, and the, there's the scene where John Turturro is like climbing up a pyramid. Yes, there's something. Egypt. Yes, and a well, it's a giant like transformer that's made out of like construction equipment, and for whatever reason, like the wrecking balls, gone, look like, gone, they look, they look like testicles. And they look like testicles, and John Turturro is on a radio screaming to like someone in like an airplane, saying, "I'm underneath the robots, uh, scrotum." And I, I wanted to just like walk out of the theater and set my eyes on fire when that happened. Um, one of the worst movies in, I've ever seen. In the movie's defense, that it was one of those movies that was wait, that was kind of a victim of the writer strike. Yes. Uh, oh, a couple I remember years that. Before. Yeah. yeah. So that's kind of. What, why sure we sure we, we can yeah let's play let's play uh, about the writer's strike sure yeah that's I'm what it is yeah that's one element. i'm just saying that's one element. no i um, understand i understand um, but yes the first so, transformers the best transformers yes anyway. versus road versus road america 2022 okay I, th I think i might have seen this when i was scrolling through my movies to pick i, I but i can't remember the score i'm gonna go with transformers is higher by three points, fifty-eight percent. Fifty-eight percent. At fifty-eight percent, I think the I think the last. That's one actually that's made, really surprising. That's actually kind of like oh, that's that's. that's uh. I think that's a fair score for that movie. Like it's it's fine, but it's. Not I would like, have given it like sixty-five, maybe at least. Uh, I mean, it, sure. But okay, all right, all right, all right. My pick. Um. This is sort of sort of racing themed. Um, so okay, it, it started it's out turbo. As... It's turbo, <laughs> isn't it? <No. laughs> well, what started as a semi racing movie has now morphed into basically just a superhero franchise. Yes. Um, my my choice for you, John, is two thousand one. It has now been two thousand. It has now been twenty one years since this movie. It's now been two thousand years. Feels like it. Feels like it. 
but it has been 21 years since we all started to learn about what it meant to be family. <laughs> I get by quarter mile at a time. Quarter mile at a time. You're, I'm pitting you oh, against no. the good, the Jeff Gold Good Race Poll and 2001's Fast. Fast and, and the Furious. Furious. Oh, man. I legitimately tried to go back a couple years ago and watch all these movies to try and get into the new ones. And I stopped at the third one. Like the third one, Tokyo Drift is so bad. The second one's terrible too. Um, oh, my, my, my friend, my friend, my friend Crow, or my original uh, host on the show would, pro- would probably find those to be fighting words. Cause I, from everything I, I remember him saying, cause he, he just loves that franchise. It's, it's the, it's the guilty pleasure thing for him. The, I think I, I think the, I probably just need to start at the fifth one. Cause like the fifth one seems to be the one where like, they just what said, screw it. We're going to go just bonkers the, and go all out. The, it, it's very much like the mission impossible movies. Like okay. it hit, yeah, it hits this like mission impossible. It hit the fourth movie. <laughs> And it just like completely just like changed its dynamic and scope and everything. I think um, I should just start at the fifth one then because like I I, I enjoy the first one for what I've it only, is. It has I have only seen three of them. I've only seen I've seen the first one, the Fast and the Furious. I've seen the fifth one in theaters. Almost put me to sleep. And, <laughs> and then I saw the Dwayne Johnson, Dwayne Johnson, uh, Jason Statham spinoff movie, oh, which Hobbs I liked. And, Hobbs and Shaw. Yeah, it was yes. fun. I liked it. It was. Fun. I liked it. I didn't need um, to watch the other ones, so I liked it. Yes, so I I will probably I'll I'll probably come to get back to this franchise at some point. Um, but but yes. anyways, Road as, America, Road versus America versus Fast, Fast and, Furious. and Furious. I doesn't does Fast and Furious have like a fifty three? Is that I think it's I think I think it's lower. I think Fast and Furious is lower, or is it like fifty seven? I think I think it's lower. That's my final answer. It it is lower. Fast and Furious is lower than Road oh. America, America score. It's I'm off the schneid. Fi- it's at 54%. 51%. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm off the schneid. Oh, I couldn't go down 2 2 0 against you this season. The, um, audience, the audience score is 74%. So yeah, that makes sense. That's not surprise me. Fast, the fast the, and Furious. The, the, the Fast and the Furious, that is just such a relic of its moment. Like, yes. It, it's. Like the, the main premise in that movie, or maybe at the at, at that point, they're just like smuggling used DVD, play, like yeah. a truck full of DVD players. That's what outside street racing. That's what that thing was about. If they and remade now, it, and now they're going to space. So. Yeah, now you couldn't. I mean, now you couldn't even like try and smuggle like we did. Because like Tyler Reddick's got it on his car in a NASCAR race, like you know, <laughs> that, that's kind of like um, smoking the bandit. That that premise is that it was like illegal to transport like beer or something across certain state lines or something like that, and that's why Burt Reynolds, the bandit, is hired to go from Atlanta to Texarkana and back to get a truckload of Coors Light, and bring it back to to Atlanta. That premise, it's not possible anymore because no. it's so out of date. No. So, no, so the, pa- uh, the powers that be will always allow illicit pleasures once they realize how much money they can make <laughs> while legalizing illicit <laughs> pleasures. So that's if, if, if you're making Smoking the Bandit today, John. What, what what's the thing? What what's the hook that gets the bandit from Atlanta to Texarkana? What, what's the thing? What do you think it is? I don't, I don't know. Like what's like what like I can't think of anything that's like that illegal that would like like aside from like like obvious things that I won't mention just because they're horrible, but like, yeah. like, like, like I can't think of anything. <laughs> Use D- like DVD players. <laughs> um, if, if it was like a certain filmmaker, it'd be like, we need you to go find all those votes that got miscalculated for Biden in 2020. Save us, Burt Reynolds, from the liberal scum. Um, I just... <laughs> I, in, my, in my head, it's it would be like um it would be re- it would reference the movie like all right we're going to re- recreate bandits run and it, it that's what it would be like and then shenanigans happen along the way well like since it, this since this is the last year for bushlight apple it could be i could be kevin harvick like going on a trip to, like, oh get- that is no that is no okay that should be it it should be something that's illegal 
it should be something that's just in limited quantities that's only located in this one spot yeah so bandit yeah i need you to go get go go get me a truckload of hard mountain dew <laughs> which is only available in six markets all right <laughs> bring it back here to this track in the next 24 hours hard mountain you, dew that's could it could you imagine kevin harvick with a with a burt reynolds mustache <laughs> like, he looks like he's never had to shave in his life he has such a baby face even despite, <laughs> being, despite being almost 50 like i wouldn't say that to his face because he could kick my ass but um like ryan blaney would be perfect for that oh yeah oh yeah like ryan blaney and chase elliott and bubba wallace on like a Not buddy no, oh you'd have to right right ryan, to... ryan blaney and bubba wallace and like yep. a buddy like a buddy a buddy cross-country like road trip comedy chase elliott does not have the charisma I think if he was like, if, if you gave him like enough like deadpan lines, okay, that, yeah. that could be his thing. Or like he's not funny, haha. He's like funny in a droll way. He could maybe do that. But yeah, Blaney and Bubba Wallace go go so, cross so, country. Okay, so, so, Bla- so Blaney's bandit. He's driving the Trans Am. Is Bubba Snowman? Is he driving the hauler? Sure. Yeah. I think okay, all right. So and also, just be fun to it'd be, it'd be fun to see a black man be named Snowman, but just keep the name Snowman because of all the because I mean you know for just the drug references, it's hilarious. Like Young Jeezy, he's a Snowman. Yeah, it works. It's great. And there and there's your soundtrack right there. It's just all Young Jeezy songs. Well, Bubba Wallace is like a, no Bubba and Ryan are like death metal fans. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. So that. that <laughs> <laughs> They should get they should get a death metal singer to do the He's national anthem. Can we get a can we get a can we get a death metal singer to do the national anthem in a NASCAR race? Oh my god, please, please. I mean, <laughs> oh, just a and then the camera cuts to, to Bubba Wallace, just a single tear rolls down his eyes. This man is just screaming the national anthem into a microphone at a family event. Remember when when Steven Tyler did the national anthem and he's I like, I do. I was there at the five hundred. Oh, that was the Indy 500, wasn't it? Oh, I yeah, I was there. Was... Yeah, he got booed. Yep. I thought it was. The... I thought that was the day. Land of the Land of the Free and home of the Indianapolis 500, and he got booed. What year was that? Uh, 2001, 2002. Really? Something like that. Yep. Wow. wow. I was there. <laughs> Man, what yeah. about you? You were also the year the there the year Carmelo Anthony fielded two cars and they wrecked on the first lap, right? yeah i don't man i do remember that i can't tell you what year that was do you remember what year, what year that was oh, I don't. yeah i was yeah i was there if it was any if it was any race after 97 other than 2020 for covid yeah i was there so good times all right so yes uh the <laughs> road american best race score higher than fast and the furious but lower than transformers you know that's a that's an accurate rating i would say that's accurate and we, we will <laughs> Me and John will soon be starting on our screenplay for the Smokey and the Bandit reboot starring Ryan Blaney and Bubba Wallace as they attempt to go from Atlanta to Texarkana and back in 24 hours to get a truckload of hard Mountain Dew. Yes, and since Mountain Dew is there, we have to have a cameo by Dale Earnhardt Jr., obviously. So <laughs> Maybe he's oh, the wait, villain. No, no, he has his own vodka. He, he, he can't be in a movie endorsing hard Mountain Dew because he has his own it. you're right <laughs> so wait, the, oh the, the the oh the the people who hire um brian and bubba that's dale jr yeah <laughs> there you go all right there wait, you wait, go. Wait, who, who's who is smoky in this who is chasing them who is chasing them um Venus, you scum bum noah gregson He's got the mullet, and he's not afraid to get dirty. No. <laughs> Clint, Clint Boyer. Clint Boyer is smoking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. It just, yep. Water's wet, and Clint Boyer's smoking. No, you're right. That That's a so, perfect... Smoke, that's smoke, perfect. So Clint Boyer's law, man. That, might be, a, that might be a stretch. <laughs> perfect. All right. That's it. That, that's been this week's Dropping the Hammer with Dan McFadden. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Dan McFadden. Email me at, at danmcfadden at gmail.com. Follow me on YouTube at youtube.com slash Dan McFadden. John, Mr. Cheddar's fan. John, John LaFont, Cheddar fan, number one. 
Uh, <laughs> all the ladies call me cheddar. Um, no, it's uh, because I got that cheddar. JK, um, I'm very poor. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at John Lafale. Same with Instagram at John Lafale. All right. All right. Thank you guys for listening. Uh, we'll, we'll be back here again next week after Atlanta, where hopefully Bubba Wallace doesn't have any pit problems. So <laughs> thank you guys for listening. Take care.